So in this video, we're going to be looking at the mass spring system again, but instead of a horizontal mass spring system on a frictionless surface, we're going to look at something a bit more realistic, like this here. We're going to look at a vertical mass spring system. Now obviously, there's going to be a lot of similarity between this and the horizontal system, but we have the additional force of gravity that we have to take account of. So to see how we do that, let's have a look in a bit more detail. Here we have an idealized vertical mass spring system. And as you can see, it's oscillating up and down quite happily. Now, when we dealt with the horizontal mass spring system, what we did was we looked at the forces acting on the mass, and then we applied Newton's second law, and that gave us an equation of motion, which was a differential equation, but an equation of motion for the system, and when we solved that equation of motion, we ended up with a mathematical expression for the displacement of the mass as a function of time. So let's take exactly the same approach with our vertical mass spring system. Now we've stopped the mass bouncing up and down, and we've added some details um, to the system. So what we've added in is the force uh, that are the forces that are acting on the mass. So the first of these is the force due to the spring. That's given by Hooke's law, and so we have the spring constant k times the extension of the spring x. And remember, the extension is defined as the difference between the total length of the spring and the natural length of the spring. So the extension here is given by uh, x. Then we have this additional force, which we did not have when we were dealing with the horizontal mass spring system, and that is the constant force of gravity that's just the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength, and that acts downwards. So now we've got the forces acting on the mass. What we need to do is we just need to apply Newton's second law. And when we're doing that, it's always good practice to put an arrow with a plus sign next to it to indicate which direction we're taking is positive. And so I've chosen to take downwards as positive. So when we apply that, we want the net force F that's acting on the mass. Well, that's the weight mg, which is positive because it's acting downwards. And then we subtract from that k times x. That's the spring force. It's negative because it's acting upwards. And that is equal to m times x double dot, which is the mass times the acceleration. And remember here that x double dot, I've used Newton's dot notation, which is d2x by dt squared in Leibniz notation. So I've got the equation of motion now from Newton's second law. So let's rearrange that to try and make it a bit more recognizable. I'll divide through by m. And so here I'm going to have x double dot, and that is going to be equal to minus k over m times x, and then plus g. So what I want to do now is compare that to the equation of motion we already know for a simple harmonic oscillator. And that equation of motion, the general equation of motion we've already got, is just x double dot is minus omega squared times x. So we can see here we've got some similarities. I've got a second order differential on one side, just like I have for the uh, equation of motion for a simple harmonic oscillator. And I have an x term on the other side, and I've even got a constant in front of it. And that constant uh, will be that omega squared is equal to k over m, which is exactly what we had before for the horizontal mass spring system. Unfortunately, I also have this extra term here, this constant uh, plus g, and that's messing things up a bit because I know the solutions to this equation of motion. I don't necessarily know the solutions to this equation of motion. So how am I going to get rid of this constant g? Well, to do that, and to do that in a general way so that we know the mistake that we made, so where we went off the rails here, um, so to understand where we went off the rails, let's have a look at this general simple harmonic oscillator equation. So if I look at this general one here, what it's telling me is that x double dot is minus a constant times x. So that tells me that when x double dot is zero, then I must also have x as zero. 
Now, obviously, that's not going to be the case the way I've chosen X here, and where I've chosen X is the extension of the spring. Because when the extension of the spring is zero, the mass is up here, and when X is zero, K times X is zero, so there's no force due to the spring. The only force I've got is due to gravity, and that's this constant weight term, M times G, and so, of course, the mass is going to accelerate. I'm not going to have X double dot be zero. So, where is x double dot going to be zero? Well, if we remember Newton's second law again, this is mass times acceleration. So if x double dot is zero, then the net force on the mass must also be zero. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the position where the net force on the mass is zero, and of course where the net force is zero, that is what we call the equilibrium position. So if I measure my displacement from equilibrium, then I will satisfy what I want for this simple harmonic oscillator, that the acceleration is zero when the displacement from equilibrium is zero. So let's do that. Let's rewrite uh, our simple harmonic oscillator equation of motion using the displacement from equilibrium. What I've done now is I've taken the same diagram, but I've rewritten it slightly. So what I've done is I've added in this position here, and that's the equilibrium position. So when the mass is at this position here, there is no net force acting on the mass. It's at equilibrium. Now, of course, in an oscillation, it's not going to stay there. It's going to have a velocity at equilibrium, so it'll move through equilibrium, and we'll still get oscillations. But if I held it there, if I positioned it here with zero velocity, it would just stay there because there's no net force acting on the mass. And x0 here is the extension of the spring when the mass is at the equilibrium position. Now, y here is our new displacement variable, and it's defined as the displacement of the mass from the equilibrium position. And if I look at this diagram here, you can see now that when the spring's down here, the extension of the spring is this distance here, and so that is the extension of equilibrium plus the displacement from equilibrium. And so our spring force now becomes k times, and then it's x0 plus y. So just as we did before, let's write down Newton's second law. And again, we're going to take downwards as positive. So when we do that, we get that mg, which is positive because it's the weight and it acts downwards, minus the spring force, which is now at k times x0 plus y is equal to the mass times the acceleration, and our displacement variable now is y, so the acceleration is d2y by dt squared, or y double dot if we're using Newton's dot notation. So all I have to do now is rearrange this, and I get y double dot, and that is equal to, uh, well, it's g minus, and now I get kx naught over m, and then minus k over m times y. So at first glance, it doesn't look like I've improved things because now I've got two constant terms uh, out the front instead of just one that we had before. But let's use a little bit of extra information that we've got. We know that x0 is the extension of the spring when the mass is at the equilibrium position. By definition, the equilibrium position is when there is no net force on the mass. And so that means that at equilibrium, the spring force here, which is k times x0, because that's the extension at equilibrium, so that's the spring force at equilibrium, exactly cancels the weight of the mass, which is just m times g. So if I rearrange that slightly, I can get that g is just equal to kx naught divided by m. And all I did to derive this was use the condition that there is no net force at the equilibrium position. 
So, if g is kx0 over m, g minus kx0 over m is 0. And those two terms disappear. And what I'm left with is that y double dot is equal to minus k over m times y. And if I compare that to my general uh, equation of motion for a simple harmonic oscillator, I can see that it matches perfectly, right? Obviously, I'm using a variable y now instead of x, but that doesn't matter. Um, k over m is a constant, so what these tell me here is that omega squared is equal to k over m, and so, of course, I get that omega is just the square root of k over m. So what I've shown is that this vertical mass spring system is indeed a simple harmonic oscillator, but when you're doing the derivation to get the equation of motion, you have to use the displacement from equilibrium. And when we do that, we get the equation of motion for a simple harmonic oscillator just pops straight out, and we don't end up with any nasty constant terms. We know the frequency, and so therefore, of course, I can immediately write down the solution because we know the solution to this equation of motion here, and we just have that y is equal to a cosine and then omega t plus phi, where a, of course, is the amplitude, and phi is the initial phase of the motion. Now, although we did it for this specific example here, this shows a very general principle that you should always use when you're deriving your equation of motion for a simple, or something that might be a simple harmonic oscillator. And that is, always, always, always measure your displacement from the equilibrium position. If you do that and you end up uh, and you have a simple harmonic oscillator, you will end up with an equation of motion that looks exactly like it's supposed to and you will be able to know at that point that you have got a simple harmonic oscillator. If you don't do that, then you will end up with a constant term. And mathematically, it's easy to, to do a transform to get rid of that constant term, but you've just made your life harder, right? So if you remember to always measure displacement from equilibrium when you're trying to come up with the equation of motion, your life will be a lot, lot easier when you're dealing with a simple harmonic oscillator. And that applies to all simple harmonic oscillators. It's a general principle. So as we've just seen in the maths, the motion that we expect from a vertical mass spring system is exactly what we're seeing here, and that is that the mass will oscillate up and down. Now, of course, that's only a qualitative uh, description. If we want to do it a bit more quantitative, we can use this particular mass, which is more than just a simple mass. It actually has embedded sensors that can measure the acceleration um, it's a three-axis accelerometer. Obviously, we're only interested in the y-axis for the acceleration. And on the top here, we've got a force meter that can measure the spring force from the extension of the spring. So if I start this oscillating again, this data is picked up by these sensors, wirelessly transmitted over Bluetooth to my laptop, and we can generate some plots. So we have the acceleration, we can convert the acceleration into the displacement simply by integrating with respect to time twice. We'll deal with the details of that in a subsequent uh, uh, lecture. But for now, just trust me that we can integrate the acceleration data twice with respect to time, and that will give us the displacement. And so we can compare that uh, versus time, and what you can see is that we get a nice cosine-like or sine-like distribution. So obviously, the, as far as we can tell from this data, the derivation we did works and agrees with experiment, which is always nice. Now the other little thing we can do here is we can, because we're measuring the force on the top and we know the weight of this mass, we can use those two bits of data to calculate the net force on this oscillating mass. And what we can see is that the force is zero when the displacement of the mass is zero, 
um, using the variables that we defined here. So again, we're showing at least that you know, our definition of using displacement from equilibrium is the one that's working. We have zero net force when there is zero displacement from equilibrium. And that's of course also when we get no net acceleration. So that's it for the vertical mass spring system.